In this video I'm going to explain and demonstrate VRF to VRF root leaking using the root replicate command um, in this topology. So this topology is one I've used a couple of times in a couple of blog posts um, and videos. Um, we're only going to be focusing on this area in this video. Um, we're not looking at any of the stuff over here. Um, the aim of this video is getting R5 to be able to communicate with R6 and likewise the other way around so what we're going to need to do on R1 is leak the connected routes between the two VRFs so that the VRF routing table for VRF red knows about this network the 10.1.3.0 network and likewise the VRF routing table on VRF blue knows about this 10.1.4.0 network so that communications can be successful between R5 and R6. So if we have a look at the current state um, of the VRF routing tables so if we look at red and blue you can see that all these have got in them are just the connected and local routes. There's there's no current leaking going on. So we're going to need to do two things here, um, or three things really. We need static default routes on R5 and R6 pointing towards R1, so that it knows to send the traffic to R1. Um, the second thing we're going to need is some prefix lists and route maps on R1 to catch the specific prefixes. We, in this case, we've only got connected and local routes in the routing table, um, but if you had multiple routes in these tables and you were to use this method, it would pull all the routes across. So what we, what we want to do is specify a route map which just specifies the specific prefix that we want to leak between the VRFs. So we need some prefix lists and some route maps to do that and then we'll do the root leak configuration on the VRFs. So let's come on to R5 and I don't believe, let's just check. Yeah we don't have a gateway of last resort or a static route so let's configure a default static route and point that at 10.1.3.1 and then likewise on R6 yeah. and we'll point that at 10.1.4.1 so now R5 and R6 have got static default routes pointing at R1 so on R1 let's create two prefix lists so IP prefix list Call this one VRF red um, network, and we will permit. Ooh, we'll permit the network ten dot one dot four dot zero slash thirty. So that is this network here ten dot one dot four slash thirty. And then we will do the same for 10.1.3 and amend the name to blue. And then we'll create a route map for leak red. And we will match the IP address prefix list of VRF red network. Exit out of that. And then create another route map called leak blue and again we'll match IP address prefix list VRF blue network so we've now got two prefix lists here and we've created two route maps that are matching those addresses so we need to come out of here and come into the VRF definition for VRF red 
and go into the address family of IPv4. So within here, we've got the root replicate command. And what that is going to want is it's going to want the VRF we're coming from, which is unicast. If we are in VRF red, we're wanting routes to come from VRF blue. And we want from unicast, oh sorry I need to specify from VRF blue then we specify unicast all and then we'll tag a route map on so here we are within the red VRF configuration and we are pulling routes from the blue VRF so the route map we want to apply here is the leak blue because this one contains the blue the 10.1.3.0 network so we want that there and then come out of this VRF configuration and we go into VRF definition for blue address family IPv4 and then we'll do root replicate from VRF red we'll specify unicast all root map and then I believe the root map was called leak red so what we should see if we look in red and blue We see these routes here with the plus next to them. They've come in as connected routes because they've just been literally replicated between. So the plus, if you would look at the legend here, specifies it's been replicated. So what we see now in the blue VRF, we see the connected route for VRF red. So the blue VRF on this interface here now knows that to get to 10.1.4.0, which is the network down here, is directly connected through the VRF on this interface. And then likewise, within the red VRF table that's on this interface here, it can see that 10.1.3.0, which is the network in the blue VRF, is directly connected via the blue VRF out of gigabit ethernet 00. zero. So, what we should now be able to do, and we won't see anything different in the routing table on the the routers within the VRFs. They're just the same as they were before with this static default route. What we should be able to do is ping from R5 to R6. So ping 10.1.4.2. We can see that's worked. And we can do a trace to verify. Yep, so we're hitting 10.1.3.1, which is this interface here, and then we're going straight over to 10.1.4.2. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the only configuration really required was on R1, um, where we're doing that route leaking between the VRFs using the prefix lists and the route maps and then tying that together with the root replicate command under the specified VRFs.